In this video I'm going to show you how to use MSN Messenger to get remote assistance for somebody to remotely help you on your computer. So what I've done is I've created a small problem. I have um, WordPad open here and I've typed a few things. How do I underline something and I also want to make it bold. And let's say that for whatever reason I'm not smart enough to figure out how to do that and I call a buddy of mine and he wants to see my machine. So the first thing you have to do is have a Hotmail address and if you do you want to find Messenger on your computer and if you don't have Messenger typically we'd go to Start, type Messenger and look for it. If the software isn't there, in this case it says Windows Live Messenger Download so obviously I don't have it. And when you click the download link or whatever you're getting to the regular Hotmail page and there's nothing on here to indicate how to download Messenger. So first I'm going to log in with my Hotmail account. As I mentioned, you're going to have to have your own Hotmail address on your side to be able to do this. And once you're in, Hotmail also has like a web version of MSN Messenger. And you can see already that it says there's one invitation because I've given this email address out to another Messenger person for them to add me as a user. Now if I click that, first thing it's asking me is set up my privacy settings, so I'm just going to keep it at the standard default of limited and save it. And it says John Doe wants to be my friend, which is the technician. I say OK. And so you can see at the top there's Hotmail as my email, there's Messenger, and you can see how it says sign out of Messenger, but this version of Messenger, the web version, doesn't have the necessary software to do the remote um, assistance that we need. So if we go to www.microsoft.com forward slash messenger, it says the page can't be found, but on this Microsoft search page it still allows you to download Messenger in the bottom right corner. It says related downloads. So um, all you'd have to do again is go to microsoft.com slash messenger and just click on the related downloads messenger link and it brings you to this page for Windows Live Messenger 2011 and you just click download. takes a little bit of time to figure it out and then it pops up and it says you have chosen to open WLS setup webexe and just to take a quick look at what that file name is again there it is WL setup webexe that way you know you're downloading the correct file so it's a really short program just to start that's not the full download but if you double click this it asks you um, that you're about to install a program and you have to grant it per permission, so say continue. It takes a long time and then all of a sudden this pops up and it says preparing to install. So what this is doing is it's actually contacting the Microsoft server and downloading the, the file. and it says what do you want to install and you can have all of the components and there's a lot of different um, added features that you can download there's many there everything from a photo gallery to everything else um, that would take a long time to download all of it I just want messenger for the purpose of this video so I'm going to choose the programs that I want and I'll take the check marks off of all these other ones I just want to leave the messenger one checked and then I just go install so now it's going to contact the Microsoft server messenger alone is a very large program as well these days so I've sped up the video uh, by four times the speed and even at four times the speed it looks like it's kinda of slow this probably will take you at least a full 15 minutes to download and it's nearing completion at normal 
uh, video speed now so you can see it says it's done so we just close it's going to be taking forever to close okay close and now it shows you a new window this is the actual messenger um, live essentials window so you log in with your hotmail address in this case I've chosen Jane underscore user as the uh, victim person that needs help with their computer I click remember my ID password uh, all those check marks are good if it's your own PC and then go sign in Now the first time you sign in it's going to give you um, a one-time choice that you have to select. Um, here it's asking you if you want to connect all of your other services to it. You could do that later. For now I would just say skip. And it wants your cell phone number. Again I would push skip. So now it opens up this uh, window, but if you notice in the bottom right hand corner where your time is on the computer, it says this little blue guy shows you that you actually have the software installed of uh, Messenger. If you don't see that blue guy, then you don't have the software yet. So the first time you log in, it says welcome to the new Messenger, and you have a choice. You can either see the MSN page or social highlights page. I always do the social highlights, it's up to you. There are different views of what information you see when you log in. Either one will work. Okay, so now you're logged into the big expanded view of Windows Live Messenger. Um, I find this window a little too large, especially for chat windows and whatnot. I like to shrink it down. So in the top right corner, right where it says inbox, right beside it, there's like a little icon that says switch to compact view. So that will shrink down this window to a smaller size. And people who have used Messenger for a while might recognize this looks more like the original Messenger window we've been using for so many years. So it says that John Doe is online because I've already added them. And if I double click his name, I can send him a message now. So whatever I type in that box, he will see. So I say, hello, how are you? And that gets sent. Now I have another PC, so you can see what John's seeing on his side. So I can show you um, between the two computers. So I'm moving over to John's computer and he sees Jane Doe is, is up at the top and sees that Jane Doe wrote, hello, how are you? So he's responding, hi Jane, let me help you with your computer now. As you can see, Jane wrote, hello, how are you? John Doe says, hi Jane, let me help you with your computer now. This is... Uh, the area where you chat and there's different options down here down below now on Jane's computer this is Jane's computer now um, if you click the two little chevrons to the right you'll see a drop down you want the activities link so if you click activities it brings up another menu and at the bottom of it is request request remote assistance that's the big feature that we're looking for it says, you have invited John Doe to start remote assistance. Please wait for a response or canceled. So we'll go back to the technician's computer and it says, Jane Doe is inviting you to restart remote assistance. Do you want to accept or decline? The technician pushes accept. Back on Jane's screen, she sees, create a password that will be used by your instant messaging contact to connect to your computer. And this is to stop anybody else from getting in. So you would type in a six character password. I like to use numbers. In this case, um, I've just ch chosen six different numbers and I've already told John, John Doe what the password is ahead of time. So once I type this in, 
I just push OK and now John Doe will get a different window on his PC. On the technician's computer, John's uh, computer, he must know what the password is. So he's going to type in those same six um, characters that I've typed in and pushes OK. Now all of a sudden his screen refreshes and he can see Jane's computer now. Takes a second to load. Oh, there's one more thing to do. On Jane's it says, would you allow John Techie to connect to your computer? And then she has to push yes. So it's really security uh, minded for all of this procedure. It's no way to accidentally let people in and you'll be able to watch everything they do and you'll know when they're connected because it will give you that window that's always there that says you're connected to your helper so there's no mystery about once you let somebody in they can get in again they can't you'll see why so on the technicians PC he can't drag windows around and he can't scroll down on the scroll bars he can't push any of these buttons he's basically just seeing what you have on your PC if you decide that you, he wants to you know actually push buttons and do things on your PC he has to ask for control so the technician pushes request control this is John pushing request control and it goes back to Jane's computer now and it says would you like to allow John at Hotmail to share control of your desktop so that gives her the chance to to agree to it now, back at the technician's PC, he can actually move windows around, minimize them, drag them, and work on the, on the computer. So he's going into her, Jane's WordPad, and that problem that she had of how do I underline something, now he's able to highlight the word underline and sure enough apply the underline style to it. And the bold style, he's doing that too for her all the while she's watching him do it on her own computer and it's done the error that she needed fixed is fixed and when he's done he just pushes disconnect it says are you sure you want to disconnect doing this will disconnect you from the person you are trying to help yes and this is Jane's computer and the box behind it says the session has ended so she knows he's no longer have no longer has access and if he wants to get back in she's gonna have to do that whole procedure again as far as assigning a new password requesting assistance so if you like this video please let us know and that's basically how you use remote assistance to help somebody using MSN messenger